Hey everybody, my name is Bryce Young. I'm the president and founder of Warm Audio, and today I have a very exciting, cool new pedal I want to talk about called the WAC1 Chorus Vibrato. In this video, we're going to focus on the history of chorus and vibrato, where it came from, and how pedal formats of this type of effect came to be. We're also going to go a deep dive into the circuitry and how we decided to build our WAC1. If you are here to listen to sound samples, we definitely have those in the links below. Before we dive into the exact features of the warm WAC1, I want to talk about the history of vibrato and chorus and where it came from. I'm personally a big fan of late 60s music. Um, there was a lot of experimenting going on. And um, in the studio, there were these devices called Leslie cabinets. And what they were, they were speakers connected primarily to organs. And those speakers could spin. You could put it on a vibrato mode and the speaker would spin and it would create vibrato. It was pretty cool because back then they didn't have a way to create that effect without actually a speaker spinning. Well, from there, uh, bands started running other instruments through the Leslie. They would run guitars, vocals, bass. The Beatles are well known to be one of the first bands to do this. Later, though, people started to realize that if you take the clean recorded audio, for example, a guitar, and mix that with the vibrato guitar, you would create a chorusing effect. So with the experimenting of Leslie speakers, we created vibrato and chorus. From there, as effects became more popular in recorded music and on stage, more and more companies started building things like this, and so chorus and vibrato effects were built to be rack-mounted in studios and on stage. But it wasn't until the mid-70s that an actual effects pedal was built to be put for a guitarist or a keyboardist on stage. So one of the very first pedals of the chorus and vibrato effect is now today still considered one of the best. It is coveted, they are very expensive to find online, and we have decided to recreate that pedal, but we've added more features and I'm very excited to tell you about them. In a modern digital world, there are a lot of ways you can create a chorusing and vibrato effect. Obviously, there's a lot of digital processing available to do that, but we wanted to do it the old school, mid-1970s way of doing it with Bucket Brigade chip technology. The WAC1 uses a Bucket Brigade chip recreation made by the company X5. I'm personally a fan of the mid-1970s pedal that a lot of people really, really love, and I've watched the market as brands have come out with recreations of this pedal or similar versions. And um, they are all over the map. Some don't sound anything like the original, some sound kind of close. I feel really confident in how close this sounds to the original 70s pedal. I'm, I'm very excited for you to hear it and check it out. Chorus and vibrato are oftentimes used as effects for layering and being in the background of a mix. Of course, they can be put forward, but oftentimes they are there for layering and adding texture. So some of the bands that you have heard of that have used this exact type of Bucket Brigade chorus are Queen, The Police, Stone Temple Pilots, and the Red Hot Chili Peppers. All right, so let's get to the front panel here of the pedal. Before I start talking about the knobs and switches, I wanna talk about the size of the pedal. The original pedal was about double the size, it was massive. And we know that pedal board size and fit is very important, so we made it smaller. Another thing to talk about that you can't see visibly here is the input stage. The original had a really great sounding op amp on the input, and it's always on. And the level control is actually just controlling how much level is coming in into that op amp. A lot of people that have recreated this style of pedal have actually removed that op amp stage completely out of the circuit because it's not proper impedance for guitars. We didn't want to do that. We wanted to give you the full vintage experience. We also wanted guitarists that want a proper guitar impedance for a brighter tone to be able to access that. So on the back side here, there is a switch to be able to flip into a 1.1 meg input impedance, which is gonna be great for guitars and give you all the openness that you want. If you want that vintage sound that was designed originally for keyboards, but sounds really dark and cool on guitars, you can switch to that too, and that's a 50K ohm impedance. The um, finish here, some people think it looks, it might be plastic, it is not. It's actually a cracked powder coat type paint. So it's a very durable structure. And then we've got some really nice, classy, anodized, uh, brushed aluminum face plates here. All right, so let's talk about the input controls. There's a level control here, and there's also a high and low switch. Both of these control how much signal comes into the pedal and hits that first op-amp stage. The level control is fully variable. 
Um, but the high and low is pretty significant. So when you go into high, what that's gonna be is it's gonna be an unpadded input. And then if you go into low, it's gonna drop the amount of signal coming in and it's gonna be padded. It's gonna sound a little darker too. I've noticed for me when I've played around with it, that the impedance switch on the back takes less effect or is less noticeable when you're in the low mode. So I personally like it in high. I feel like the sound is richer. But um, if you have your level turned down and you're in high mode and there's still too much signal coming into the pedal, then you could switch to low mode to just lower that and then turn it back up here. So the next feature I want to talk about are the chorus controls. You've got depth and rate. On the vintage 70s pedal, there was just one knob and it was called intensity. And the intensity changed the rate of the chorus. You might ask, well, what about depth? What was the depth on the vintage pedal? Well, the depth was permanently set all the way up. We wanted to give you the ability to have a little more wet, dry mix capability. And so that's one feature we're really excited to have added to this. All right, so the next two controls on the front are depth and rate for vibrato now. So they are the same controls that we have for chorus. And the vintage pedal had depth and rate also. To switch in vibrato and get it going, you just click the foot switch here and you will start to see the LFO move here in the blue color LED. And then to go back to chorus, click on that switch again. So down here in the bottom left, you have an effect on and off switch. When you click that on, the effect will turn on. When off, you're gonna go to bypass. There's an LED above it. You may wonder why that doesn't turn on when the effect is on. That LED is actually a clip LED to show you when you're sending too much signal into the preamp stage and you're clipping the input. All right, so the backside features, there's just a few. Let's start with the uh, nine volt power inlet. The original pedal actually ran on more voltage and it used a power cord that would go straight to an AC outlet. We obviously wanted you to be able to use your standard power supplies for this pedal. And so we have a DC to DC converter inside the circuit that boosts up the voltage. So it is running on the same voltage as the vintage pedal. As mentioned earlier in the video, here's the high Z switch for the standard vintage input impedance or the increased 1.1 meg guitar impedance, if you flip it to the right. Then you've got your input here, and then you've got two outputs. So here's your mono output if you're just going to a guitar amplifier, for example. But if you do have two speakers or you're going to a PA, you could separate them out and use the pedal in stereo. Thanks for taking a moment to learn about the WAC1 Chorus Vibrato with me. If you want to check out some videos, sound samples, a lot of other information is available at warmaudio.com. Thanks again. <laughs>